WGCH News Center time is 821, and I'm happy now to be joined by two former Greenwich High School grads who are doing very exciting things. They're trying to bring a play uh, that they've written and are producing to Off-Broadway and using an innovative funding technique to make it happen. And Sean Hudak was in my uh, daughter's class at... Uh, at uh, at uh, twin daughters' class at Greenwich High School, and Rocco maybe was too. Were you in the same classes? So. And anyway, Rocco Natal is the playwright, and his work has been a, a semifinalist in the Eugene O'Neill National Playwrights Conference in premier stages, currently a member of the BMI Musical Theater Workshop with a master's from NYU and a BA from NYU. And Sean Hudak is the creative producer, and he is a producer, actor, and award-winning theater artist whose work has been seen on stages and screens throughout the U.S., including six seasons with Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey. And what looked cool to me was he was in the Great Tennessee Monkey Trail opposite Ed Asner. Welcome, guys. How are you? Thank you so much Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Okay, um, I guess first off, Rocco, why don't you give us a sense of what is The Room at the End of the Hall? Sure. Uh, the Room at the End of the Hall is a play I wrote about five or six years ago. It's... Um, kind of a, a family drama um, about two brothers who've been estranged for a number of years, one of whom may or may not have uh, the ability to connect with the universe beyond uh, beyond the physical world. And so it's a play that very much deals with the question of uh, families and brothers and relationships and who we believe and who we believe at any given time. Do we believe the people that are closest to us? Um, and so it's – I wanted to explore – as a playwright, I wanted to explore a world beyond the everyday existence that we live. And they're twin brothers? They are. They're twin brothers. Yes, yeah, so I have twin daughters, so I know that uh, That twin well, connection is a very that, strong thing. It's a tremendous bond, yeah. <laughs> it can be negative sometimes, but – um, I watched that video as I was telling you before we went on, and I think Sean referred to it as a haunting piece of theater. Yeah. Give me a sense of what that means. I think uh, – We've heard that word, you know, Sean Sean was so specific with that word, and I think he was accurate. I think it is a haunting piece of theater. And I don't really say that as the playwright. I say that as someone who's been in the room with audiences as they've watched the play. And I am struck by the amount of times people will call me or email me. We did a reading of the play in September. I'm sorry, uh, in the summer, in July, I think. And um, I'm still on a weekly basis getting emails from friends who are like, you know, I, I just thought about this. And when he said wow. this, it means this. And so I think it I think it's haunting in the sense that the events that transpire during the play are at moments within themselves frightening. But I think it also refers to the fact that it's a play that, that doesn't really leave you very easily, that, that stays with you. Mm. Sean, uh, tell us, how do you get a play to uh, Off-Broadway? Man, uh, it's a really great question, and I think the most important thing is uh, to build as much excitement around a project as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the reasons that uh, we decided to go with this fundraising campaign on Indiegogo was exactly what Rocky's talking about. Over the course of five years, the play had been building up so much momentum, excitement, and community around from fellow artists, uh, family members, friends who said, what can we do? Theater companies, uh, playwriting festivals. People said, what can we do to help? How can we help you? So we just decided to go with this uh, kind of new crowdsourcing uh, campaign, um, and uh, it's been overwhelmingly successful. We've yeah. been just floored at all the responses. And if I could add something to that, it's interesting because Sean and I both come from classical nonprofit theater backgrounds, right. um, either behind the table or in front of the table, and we've never, neither of us have ever used a crowdsourcing uh, instrument like Indiegogo, and we're, it was really built out of the necessity that this community wanted to, our community, our friends, our family, our our colleagues at theater companies really wanted to support the play and see it on its feet. Exactly. Normally what happens is a play will solicit investors or backers, um, but our community was growing so big we just decided to go with this mm-hmm. this technique which basically allows people, normal, you know, everyday people, to become a part of a process that normally they wouldn't be, be a part of. Normal folks could become investors in a Broadway play essentially. Is, um, exactly. is this the first time this has been used in, in any off-Broadway or Broadway play? Do you know? No, it, it's, it's not the first time it's been used, but... Um, What's really cool about this process is that it involves people in a specific project mm-hmm. or in a specific cause. Yes. So it basically makes the project a cause, um, and that's what makes it unique. Okay, so Sean, tell us how much have you raised? What do you need to raise? How much time do you have? Wow, uh, we our goal is to raise fifty thousand dollars. So far, we've raised about a fifth of that, almost ten thousand uh, dollars in. 
We started the campaign on October 8th. Uh, we have 40 days left. Um, and uh, people can make donations anywhere from $25 to $10,000. And for every donation amount, there are uh, a specific level of perks. So for, uh, I know, for 25 bucks, if you donate 25 bucks, you get a ticket to the uh, world premiere, which will happen in late this year, and uh, an invite to our uh, next reading, which will be at the end of February in New York. And uh, do you know where, where it'll be uh, housed and where off Broadway and... Well, that Either. kind of that ultimately depends on uh, how much money we end up raising. And is, is fifty thousand bucks enough? Uh, it's it's enough to get us started on the road. Exactly. Um, it's 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 enough to fund the workshop that we are planning to do in the spring. Yeah, and it's enough to move the play forward farther than it's ever been before. Exactly. And allow us to be as creative as possible as artists and use a lot, utilize all the techniques um, that we've kind of uh, grown into over the past few years. Do you know who will be the director? Are you going to act in it, Sean, for instance, or? I'll, I'll, I'll be in it, be um, in and we'll have uh, we have another cast member who we have yet to announce. Uh, we have a few directors that we're working on right now. We uh, we can't make that announcement yet, though. Okay, so tell folks exactly how they in, uh, invest in you guys. Sure. First thing is you go to www.indiegogo.com slash room the play. Uh, that's I N D I E G O G O dot com uh, slash room the play. Um, and uh, there's a pink button. First, I would say watch the video so you know what you're getting into. It's about a five minute, really cool video yes, that uh, one mm-hmm. of our creative members uh, helped us put together. Um, and uh, then you press a pink contribute button, and uh, there's a four quick step process after that. It's very it's easy. Super duper easy. Uh, it looks very easy, and it looks very exciting what uh, you guys are doing. I really hope you get the 50000 Thank you Again, so that's Indiegogo.com. We'll be talking with Sean Hudak and Rocco Natel, the producer and playwright, respectively. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.